Hello and welcome to the Supernatural Fandom Track here on Continual. I'm your host, Gail Z. Martin, and today I've got guest musician Hayden Lee. Hayden's got a lot of ties to the Supernatural family. He's got some great music on his own, and we're going to explore all of that as we have a nice conversation here that you get to listen in on. So Hayden, welcome. Thanks for having me, Gail. Appreciate it. Well, thrilled to have you here. Thrilled to have you take the time to be with us today. Now, you're both a musician and a fan of Supernatural. Let's start by talking about the music on the show because there's, there's Dean's music and there's the soundtrack and both of those kind of intertwine and become such an important piece of the show. What are some of your thoughts on all of that? What does it mean to you? Uh, I think so. I'm, I am probably one of the newer fans of Supernatural. So I've, uh, I've really got into it from the stance of knowing Jason and going to play in Germany at a festival called Rockwood that Jason uh, created with um, the tour manager Sabine over there. And uh, I, I was meeting some of these uh, actors and I was like, you know what, before I go over, I should probably start watching the show so I can see what it's about. And now I think um, the show's long. I don't know if you know that, but it's a, it's a commitment. It's not a, you know, it's not something that you're going to binge in a weekend. So um, I think I'm on season nine. I can see right now I'm on season nine, episode eight, maybe episode eight. So, um, and the one thing I like the most about it, because I mean, obviously Jason had music on the show. I've never had music on the show, but um the, the music's very powerful in the way that it, it kind of helps tell the story. It gives it an edge, you know, and I like that. I like the fact it also kind of, um, I'd say, speaks to how, in particular, more probably Dean's uh, personality. Because <laughs> a, a lot of, like, you know, 80s, 70s, like, kind of classic rock in the show. And, uh, you know, cool little riffs that they'll, they'll put in there when, when they're going to be driving baby around, which is, you know, awesome. It kind of gives you that uh, something, something cool is going to happen. So I think it's, I think that the music on it's great and I think it helps kind of propel the show. So. Do you have any key songs that you've heard in the background that, you know, stood out to you and went, Oh my God, I can't believe that they played that. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, obviously carry on my way where sun is awesome. It's not that that's the, the, the first time, cause I had heard it so many times, like at these conventions and stuff. And I was like, and I never heard it on the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it just came in like a, it was almost like a way in the background and kind of coming in, coming up. And I was like, Oh, there it is. But no, there was, um, I can't even remember what it was. It was one of the, it was an eighties power ballad, which I thought was kind of cool. Cause I hadn't heard it in so long. <laughs> um, but I can't remember, I can't remember who it was by. So unfortunately, like when I'm, I do it when I'm doing the elliptical a lot. <laughs> so it's like, cause my wife, my wife will watch it here and there, but she's like, oh, you're watching the show again. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm watching it. And so um, I, I get it in like, you know, 40 minute chunks on mm -hmm. the elliptical. So sometimes I hear the music, sometimes I don't, but um, you know, I, I, again, I just think that the, the rock aspect of it, I, I write rock, so I love, that component to it so and you said you kind of came into the show through some of the music in the fandom and this is one of the most musical fandoms i've ever been a part of we've got not only the show's music but we've got loud and swain and karaoke and saturday night special concert at conventions and then jensen's new album and jason mann's music for so long and all of those hundreds of fan music videos out there. So this is an incredibly musical fandom. Mm -hmm. um, you've been to some of these cons, you know Jason, you, you've kind of seen behind the scenes. What's your thought on this whole live music piece with fandom? That, that's just something you don't find other places. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Um, you know, the first time I went and saw the Saturday Night Special, it, it's funny because I went down to Jacksonville to meet up with Jason it was the only con that was really on the East Coast and nearish Charlotte. And so I, I, it was a few years ago and I was like, hey man, I'm just gonna come down and hang out. And he was like, yeah, come down. And so I didn't know what to expect, you know, but it was, it was really cool because it's a really good production that Creation does. 
um, you know, the, the backstage, like with, with all the, um, all the, all the people helping out. I mean, it's a really well oiled machine. And mm -hmm. so, I, um, I didn't really know what to expect until I went to the first sound check and I was like, man, this is, uh, you got all the gear, you know, I'm looking around kind of, you know, gearing out because you have all these huge speakers. And I thought it was just going to be, you know, like what I play with my little guys that when I go out, um, but no, I, and, and then hearing how, I mean, Rob is 1000% professional, but, um, you know, and Rob was like, Hey, why don't, why don't you come up, you know, and, and sing a song? Like when we do the Saturday night special, I was like, all right, cool. You know, and, and I don't get, I don't get nervous at all, but it, it was funny because it was actually the show that they were doing. Um, they were broadcasting on stage it for uh, charity. And so it was, um, uh, I think it was raising money for Haiti at that point. Um, and so Misha was running the whole thing and I was sitting there kind of going over my, uh, my part, my harmonies for the song and it was trigger finger. Um, and Jason comes up and he goes, Hey buddy, how you doing? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm good. And he was like, I uh, just want to let you know, I mean, you're going to nail it. Uh, you know, just go out there. Uh, you know, there's probably about 1500 people in the crowd and you know, another 9,000 watching online. So uh, nail it, man. <laughs> and then just walks away. No I like, well, I thought I was, I thought I had the harmony. So I went back in the stairwell and like practiced it a few more times, but then going out on it, you see everybody. I was like, wow, this is a, this is pretty amazing. It's a, it's a really cool feeling. And, and Loudon Swain is, you know, Rob and all those guys are just uh, Billy Norton and Borja. They're just so professional. So um, it's cool. And it's, it's really cool. I think one of the things that has also blown me away watching the Saturday Night Special concerts is how musical our cast is. You never know who's going to be up there, but I swear, I think the only person I haven't seen sing up there is maybe Bobby Singer, uh, <laughs> you know, Jim Heaver. Uh, but they, so many people have, many people are there regularly, like Rob, but so many others, um, you know, Brianna and Kim and Gil and Matt, and you just go, wow. I knew they were talented, but damn, they're really talented. And, you know, yeah. then of course there's Jensen blowing the whole thing away. Yeah, no, it's, um, I, I went to Jacksonville, I guess, two years after the first time I went, and I met Emily Swallow. And, you know, super sweet, super funny, you know, and, uh, Rob was like, yeah, you know, why don't you go sing a harmony with Emily, like in this song? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Not, not a big deal. And so I was kind of going over the harmony and, and then I heard her sing and I was like, man, she has some pipes. She can belt it out. And like Brianna has pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Berry has pipes. Yeah. Um, you know, Jensen has really cool voice. Like, and, and he, he has pipes. I mean, he can go really powerfully high. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the, it is amazing the, the different, you know, you have these very talented artists on one side and then they're also very talented musically. And I'm like, man, I got to up my game. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get, I got to get it. I got to get good at acting or something. So no, it, there it's a, it's a blast. And it's also a very fun um, group of people. Yeah. Everybody. I think that's one of the other things that kind of amazes me. I, I do a lot of conventions, uh, I'm, I write epic and urban fantasy and, and a lot of other stuff. And so conventions are my life, not just as a fan at the supernatural conventions, but, you know, behind, behind the table at others. And we all enjoy them, but they also are a lot of energy. And some people enjoy them more than others. And I am so blown away at how much the cast seems to enjoy being up there. Um, and, and yes, I'm sure it's tiring and I can't believe all the years the guys did the flights from Vancouver on their weekends, but I, when I first went to a convention, I didn't know what to expect. And I was kind of thinking Comic-Con, that sort of thing. And it was so different and so wonderful. And you could just see that there was a, a lot of genuine enjoyment there going back and forth. And, and I got to take hats off to the whole crowd for that because that's that's a lot of energy to put out into the universe on stage 
Yeah, no, they're, um, like, like I said, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's tiring, you know, it, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm there as a spectator and I was like tired because, you know, they have set schedules, you know, they get the schedule every morning, you know, I've, I'd ask Jason and Jason has even a lighter, you know, Rob and Billy and uh, Norton and Borah, they're, they're on stage all the time because they're playing everybody coming on. Mm -hmm. and, on. and I mean, there, it's like a, it's like secret service site back there. I mean, you know, you have all these people with the, the ear sets in. And I remember the first time I was, I was leaving the room and, um, and uh, Jason's help, Jason's handler, like she, she was like, Hayden, Hayden's leaving the room, like in, into her thing. And I was like, I, I, yeah, I just, I just have to go to the restroom. Like, is that okay? <laughs> and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, we'll, we'll have somebody go with you. I was like, you don't have to have somebody go. Nobody knows me. You don't have to have somebody go with me. And, um, but like during that whole time, you see the people like in the back hallways, always shuffling. I mean, it's like a, it's like Phantom of the Opera, like where he pops up all over the place, you know, you're, you're just amazed at how, how, um, how organized it is. So yeah, it's, it's tiring for, for them. I mean, for sure. Cause at the end of the night, you can tell that they're, they're kind of drained. Um, but there's so much excitement too, you know, especially after the end of like Saturday night's uh, special. So, you know, it, everybody has just such a big energy cause it's fun. You know, they, they feed off the crowd and um, the crowd is, uh, I mean, it's super, super loyal. I mean, I'm blessed to even know any of those people. So um, a lot of fun. Yeah, it is an incredibly supportive and, like you said, loyal, positive fandom. You know, you look back on some of those videos when they persuaded Jensen to come out and just sing a little bit, and he, he told them all to be quiet because he was going to close his eyes and pretend they weren't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How far, you know, he's come. But seeing all of them really blossom in that way because so many of them have cut albums and just gone on to have fun with something that um i don't know whether that was ever part of their career plan but they had a chance to do it and who doesn't want to live a dream yeah no it's uh especially like i, I think of uh brianna and like her her album is just really awesome like i mean all the albums that jason's put out are, are phenomenal like you listen to them whether you're into covers, whether you're into that song, even like some of the cover, covers, I was never into the song. And then you hear how it was done and done a little bit differently. And you're like, yeah, I can listen to this. So, you know, you have it in the background, but listening to Brianna's album, like there were two or three songs on there that I like my daughter listens to, you know, they're always on her iPad, my seven-year-old <laughs> and you know, I'll sit there, we're on a road trip and you just hear, I'll start hearing Brianna's song through her headphones. And I'm like, Sienna, what are you listening to? And she's like, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm listening to your friend. And she turns it around and I'm like, all right, Mary, I know that song. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it, I think it, it's a, it's a necessary thing for them that they should do. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you're thinking of acting and you're thinking of, you know, the current unpleasantness, like this, it's a way to connect in a different way with, with anybody. And that's, that's why art's beautiful. That's why music's beautiful. Um, it's a little tougher to act <laughs> in this mm -hmm. environment, right? Um, but, you know, you can always sing. You can always take a ukulele or, you know, armpits or spoons or something and sing to somebody, you know? Uh, so um, I think it's, uh, I think it's great that they're doing all these out. And, and, you know, Jason does a great job as a producer. He's just, you know, he, he really does nail the vibe of what you're looking for. Now, you met Jason in college, right? In a chat room. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, we met, uh, we met like three years ago in college, um, maybe 21 years ago, but um, uh, we both went to William and Mary. And so met as freshmen because my, uh, my wife now, girlfriend then, our girl I was courting at the time, shall I say, uh, he lived in the same building in the same dorm because they had girls, boys, girls, boys. I was in an all boys dorm. So we were always over where the girls were. Um, and I was, uh, he was downstairs playing music or I was downstairs playing music, one of the two. Um, and he was like, Hey man, you know, why don't, why don't we uh, jam sometime? So we, you know, I hung out with him a couple times and then he introduced me he recommended that I try out for this uh, acapella group, all male acapella group called the Stairwells. And they're still, 
alive and kicking there. They're still doing well, William and Mary. So check them out. Um, but I was like, eh, it's not really my thing. You know, I love grunge. I love all this. I'm not like a doo-wop type guy. And he's like, you know, just, it's not the same. It's not what you think. Just check it out. And so he told me to come to their final concert and I uh, listened to it and I was like, these guys are cool. They're all like some of the guys that I hang out with all the time. Um, and they can sing, like, it sounds really good, you know, and I, I always love to sing. So, um, and I was not as great at guitar at that time, but, um, I had a guitar and so, uh, yeah, I tried out and I, I made it and, you know, he brought me into the group. Um, he also, one of our other buddies, um, Imad Aladain goes by emo. He was also in the group and we we're all the same year. So, you know, it was fun for the next three years, kind of be in that group with them. And, you know, we've just been, you know, close friends since, so. And did you know at that time that you wanted to be a musician? Did, was that on your radar at all? Uh, yeah, so interestingly enough, when we graduated, we were all, so we, Emo, Mans and I were all um, perform, like we do the acapella thing, but then we'd also like get together and, and and play songs like a lot of them were covers but we do three-part harmonies on them all the way through and then emo emo was the, the main person writing at that time that he would put, put stuff out there i i was writing and so was jason but we were a little bit more personal <laughs> about it i had played in the coffee shop on jason and i both played in the uh, it was called a homebrew at the coffee shop on on campus just kind of cutting our teeth but um it uh we got really good. Like we were sounding really, really good. And so we were kind of like, the plan was I was going to, we were all going to move out to LA after senior year. And, you know, I was, a, I'm an accounting major, you know, I'm a, I'm a CPA by trade. Um, you know, and so it, it's kind of like, I, I'm battling with the fact that I had just done my internship to try to get a job. And then, you know, I was going to go to LA after that. And I had never told my girlfriend who I was through, you know, same girl for four years in college. And I never really told her that. And I, honestly, I didn't really tell her until about five years ago. You know, we've been together for uh, 23 years. So, um, <laughs> and, and so she was, uh, I was going to move out and uh, out to LA. So Jason ended up moving out to LA. Emo lived in LA and I hadn't heard from Emo cause he was over in, um, he lives in Jordan uh, during the summer. And so I, I had to make a decision. I was either going to sign my offer to go work in the accounting field, or I was going to move out to LA and be a musician full time. And I chose the former and he literally called me the next day. He had gotten back the next day and I had already signed my offer. So I was just doing a lot of mu music stuff here and there and playing like gigs for several years. And then probably, um, 2008, I decided, I was like, I have so many songs. I gotta, I gotta record something. So, and that's where it started. And that's, you know, I put out House of the Lonely Souls. It took me four years to do. I recorded it almost every day at lunch um, with this other guy that I, with whom I worked. And um, he was the producer and he was an awesome musician. And so put that out and it's kind of, you know, taken off once Jason took me to Europe the first time, so. I always wanted to do something in art. I wanted to be an actor when I was younger. I did a lot of theater all the way through high school and middle school. And I just, uh, I had to be something. I had something, I have a powerful right brain and powerful left brain. And I just, if I don't do that, something that's artistic, then it's gonna eat at me. So, um, so kind of, I knew I was gonna do something art wise. I always thought I was gonna be an actor and then music kind of fledged on. I totally understand. I did my MBA in marketing so I could have a side gig while I got published and ran corporate marketing departments for a while <laughs> until things got off the ground. So I, I totally get you and I, I get what you mean about the, the right brain and the left brain. Um, but when you've got something inside of you like that, with you it's songs, with me it's stories, it's, uh, I get really crappy if I can't write. So I don't know if it's the same way with performing music, but you know, like you said, it eats at you if, if you don't have a way to express it. Right. 
yeah, no, it, it definitely, it definitely does. And whether it's, you know, I, Jason took me over to Germany the first time and I was this close to quitting music because I was trying to, I was, I put out my album. I was trying to like kind of promote it. And it just, it's hard, you know, being an independent musician, especially back then where it wasn't as available, a CD baby was out, but it wasn't, you know, as available as it is now or as dominant, you know, you had to have the CD, you had to have everything now. CDs are kind of almost archaic now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he, he took me over there and it was just, uh, it, I, I knew I was always going to have to write music like, cause that's just how, who I am. So I would always have songs, you know, always, I have, a, I'm looking up here cause all my guitars are up on the wall right here. So I, I always like, even when I'm working, I'll, I'll take down a guitar for 15 minutes and just something's in my head. I got to put it down. I put it down on my phone, basically have the voice notes. And that's always, I have a ton of little like things that I listen to in the car all the time if I'm traveling just to kind of write. But um, yeah, I think you, it's always going to be who you are. You know, it's not that it's not something I want to do. It's something I have to do. Mm -hmm. I, I totally get you in a completely different way. I totally get you. So now this con that Jason took you, got you to go to over in Germany, that was one of the supernatural conventions. No, it was, um, it was a tour. Okay. So, he, he was bringing over emo over to Europe and he said, Hey, uh, <laughs> typical Jason. I just had, my daughter was just born three, three months before. <laughs> he goes, Hey buddy, I know you have a newborn. I know things are probably a little rough, but, uh, if you can make it, and this is all in a text. So I'm like reading this text in his voice. Like this is how I read. it's like, if you can make it over to Germany, you know, I'll, uh, if you can somehow find a way over there, then, you know, I'll bring you around on a tour and I'll, um, you know, we're going to do three cities. Is it three cities? It's three or four cities. And I was like, and like I said, I was this close to quitting. So I, I took the text message and I showed it to my wife and I said, just say no, just say no. Like it, it, say no immediately. Like let's not string this along. Cause I had always said I wanted to go over there and play. Um, cause I knew Jason and Nemo were both doing it separately. I was like, at some point I want to do it. And she was like, well, if your mom can help, sure. And I went over and we went to, uh, we played Frankfurt, Munich, and Cologne. And it was awesome. It was, it reinvigorated me musically, like the crowds, the fandom. I mean, because a lot of those were based in the fandom were just amazing. And like, you know, you have, I was playing shows here for people that like four people, you know, at times. I mean, I've definitely played a show for five people where three of them were my family. <laughs> you know and so um there it was like everything was pretty much sold out there were smaller venues but it was like 60 people and then it grew it was like 60 people 90 people and then it was like 140 people like the last and and these are venues that like 140 people it's packed and so it was so so much fun and you know I came back and I just like it's a drug like you need it <laughs> and you know and and so the next year I went back over with emo for a little bit. And then, um, you know, Jason started doing Rockwood, which is a, a music festival over there. And a lot of that, you know, uh, um, a lot of the same uh, people that are musicians come over, you know, Loud and Swain, et cetera. Uh, and it's just, that's how I met all these supernatural actors. And it's, um, that festival is just amazing. That's grown. I, the first year, I think it was, 70 maybe 75 um jason probably knows it real but i mean it was it was big room that we were playing a small crowd so it looked mm -hmm. uh, it was, but the vibe was awesome like it was a vibe that was there and then the next year it was it was bigger and then the next year it doubled in size and then you're like wow now we're playing like you know now i think it's like four or five you know three to five hundred like it's a it's a lot <laughs> And it's in a, basically a, a room that's kind of like a ballroom in a hotel. And it's just really cool to see where it's come from in 2015 to, you know, now. Um, so that's kind of the whole Germany, Europe thing. And so we, we would also try to hit London sometimes, like after the festival. Um, sometimes that gets difficult. So I've seen about 10 minutes of London because it's normally in between. <laughs> getting off the airplane and then going to the gig. So 
I'll be there at some point. So none of these were um, explicitly supernatural festivals, but it sounds like the fandom heard and came. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely a uh, um, the same type of vibe. I mean, through all the shows, I, or through all the, um, it's similar to a con, but it's, it's, it's all music, 100% mm -hmm. music. And it's so much fun. <laughs> Like it, it really is. I mean, it, it's exhausting. Don't get me wrong. So I, I do have, I do know how those guys feel in the cons because you have your schedule. Like I get a schedule in the morning and I, it's like from 9 AM to about 2 AM you're on. And it's like, there, there are more breaks. They built in more breaks because I think they realize that, you know, we're sleeping in the green room and, you know, <laughs> wherever we can like kind of get a spare minute because, because then afterwards you're going out. Like we would go, we'd go out and, you know, have a beer or two because it's very tough to fall asleep after you've had that much energy and a huge concert and everybody's singing and just pumped up and then you leave. You, know, you can't go to bed after that. No. So, um, yeah, it's, but it's a, it's a ton of fun. If you ever get a chance to go, go. I, I, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, and I don't know if it works the same way for musicians, but for writers, a lot of business gets done in the bar at conventions. That's where people put together collaborations and sign contracts and meet editors and uh, do deals. I mean, I've sold books, I've sold series, and we also just hang out with our friends. But, I, I, and I don't know if it works that way in the music world either, but the going out part is not just cooling off after having been on all day you can also do some serious business and all it takes is meeting the right person and now a whole new chapter unfolds. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, I think a, we, we, we would joke. I mean, it's where, it's where you bond with a lot of them, right? A lot of the people, cause we have separate schedules. So we're, we'll see each other passing or we'll hang out in the green room for a few minutes. But, um, yeah, that's where you do. It, it, we also come up with a lot of the collaborations. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we would play the next day, kind of talking to somebody, Hey, you know, we're going to play this and you know, I'm going to do this part and this part, you know, and you kind of almost, uh, they call it woodshedding, <laughs> you know, for, for music, you go in the woodshed and you kind of figure it out. Right. And then we would do that in the green room, basically in corners, like the next day you, so you'd have in four corners of the room, you have four different songs going. Oh, <laughs> so wow. Sometimes, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear what you're doing. Cause you're like, all right, you know, it, you obviously it'd be tough to do it in the in the current pandemic but you know we're all like heads right around each other kind of like all right i'm gonna play it this way play it this way play it this way and then you go out on stage and you play it and it's like because we have like jam sessions during that that festival which are just so much fun because we come up with it on the fly mm -hmm. and, um so yeah i mean definitely definitely a lot happens a lot more than just the shenanigans that would normally happen at a bar happens so it, it's similar probably more from a, a probably get more from the writing perspective but it, it's more for the bonding so that i we build trust you know so that when i'm out on stage i know i can trust that this person is going to do what they're supposed to do because you know i know that when we were hanging out last night they said they would <laughs> you know and that's that's a big deal yeah it's trust it's shared experience it's some of sometimes shared misery i mean nothing bonds people like food poisoning on tour um <laughs> which we've been there uh, um, yeah uh that that's really one of the most important things besides the fact that it's fun and, and these people become friends um but i totally understand at least as far as i can from not being a musician when you're at a convention and you're one of the guests you're you've got to bring your a game the whole time you've got to be on it doesn't matter if you're tired or sick or just got bad news, you've got to be on. And when you finally get back to the room at the end of the night or the beginning of the morning. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, you, you definitely take a big, big breath. <laughs> huge, huge breath out when you, but I mean, it's also, it's just such, it's fun memories. Like you can think about, now, mm -hmm. the, uh, now again, the, a lot of the actors, they're doing that all the time, right? So I, I have the ability to do it um maybe once a year <laughs> and then and then rockwood so maybe twice a year um but it's 
it, it is a, uh, you know, when you're, when you're going out and you're performing, in particular when you're like Loudon Swain or, or, or um, Rob, who's going out and doing a lot of the emceeing and stuff during that stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's, that's what I'm saying. He's a machine, man. Because uh, that, that takes a lot of toll on your voice. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you really have to have your A game on your voice. Um, and, and all of it, not just voice, like even like Billy playing, them playing all the time. Like as I've gotten older, like it, it hurts when you play all the time. Like if you play, I used to play four hour gigs in Charlotte, you know, um, imagine talking for four hours, let alone singing at the top of your lungs and then going across metal on your, you know, sliding up and down on metal. So you really have to have good calluses. You have to have good kind of wrist, um, dexterity because, you know, I've, I've left gigs like that. And basically my wrist is like this for a little bit. (laughs) You kind of just, you know, have to bend it back into place because it, it, it takes a toll, but they are, they're always on and they're, and they're good. They're, they're professional and they're good at what they do. So. Yeah. They, they blow the room away and that's, that's fun. Um, one of the things I love the most about being at a supernatural convention is I get to be in the audience for once. <laughs> I just had to soak up all that fabulousness. Um, yeah, last, last year at DragonCon, I think I was on 19 hours of programming and I warned my husband, I said, okay, your, your job is to hand me a piece of pizza as I go by in the hallway <laughs> because sure. otherwise I'm not going to eat. <laughs> and it's wonderful, but you got to plan for those things. Yeah, no, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I know the the people that work for creation, like during that, the, I mean, they must sleep for three days after that because they're just, they're up before, you know, mm-hmm. the actors are getting in, getting everything ready. And, um, you know, so I, I've gotten to know a few of them uh, who are just, you know, the sweetest, uh, sweetest people. And you're just like, man, you gotta, I'm like, man, you gotta be tired. <laughs> Like I, I, I'm blessed because I can go back to the room at any point, like and go ahead and take a nap. Um, but, but even like Jason, like, you know, he doesn't have, he goes out to his table. He plays, he plays a few shows, uh, does his concert, which is always fun. Um, and then he does a Saturday night special and it's, but it's, it is a, you know, well old machine and it, it takes a lot, it takes a lot out of you, but it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for me whenever I go to it. So. Yeah, and, and hats off to the convention organizers of all types and all of the volunteers and all of the helpers because when you, they're the reason that there is a well-oiled machine and that contributes so much to the happiness of the guests and the professionals and, and the attendees and everybody there that it isn't chaos. And you're right, they work their butts off and so they're often the unsung heroes of the whole thing and uh, they, they deserve recognition because they do a heck of a job yeah everybody I, I mean uh everybody at creation and the volunteers and and the even the the vendors and the you know in the vendor room it's it's cool because it's like a little like little it's almost like little villages right mm-hmm. and then you have like all kind of the the tunneling you know in these massive hotels you know where all the actors are kind of going around and that's like crowded you know it's 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 a uh, it's very interesting like when you go because it's an ecosystem as opposed to just like you know some people trying to listen to you know a panel <laughs> you know it's basically a, a very fluid thing you have people that are hanging out certain places and and all of those all of those helpers are just they're they're really nice amazing people like they're they're friendly <laughs> You know, I'd be cranky at some point. I know I would, <laughs> but they're not. They're always like, hi, you know, nice to meet you. Whole new hidden sides of hotels, you know, and they take you down the service corridor, <laughs> through the spare kitchen, <laughs> and out through the laundry room. And you're going, <laughs> are we heading to my panel or am I getting kidnapped? But yeah, somehow- well, I always, I always, that's why I always feel like it's secret service. Like when you're going through there, I feel like this is how, this is how the president leaves places or, you know, any like <laughs> governor when something's going down, like they're going out through the back stuff, uh, back way. So, um, and they all look the same for some reason. I've been to, I guess, three or four of the conventions and all of that back area looks the exact same. So, I mean, it must feel like, you know, even though they're in Nashville, they, they probably feel like they're in Toronto or, or whatever, like, cause it's just, 
you know, it's got to be even more difficult than it is as a musician when you're touring and you're like going to different cities and it's hard to, that's why a lot of musicians have like on their set list, big letters, what the city is, you know, just so, so cause it's day, it's kind of like, you know, in the current unpleasantness, it's every day is the same. So it's, it's not Tuesday, it's just day, you know. Or, or it becomes, I know I'm in a Hilton. I just don't know which city the Hilton is in. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But I don't know, Hilton NBC Suites, they all look the same to me. <laughs> and, and they've only got about, each chain only has about five different decor schemes. So not only, you can't keep them straight by the decor because you've been in 10 places that all had the same decoration too. They all have the same carpet. Some carpeting company out there is making a shit ton of money. <laughs> the selling the exact same red with like little paisley uh mark carpet that's in all of those <laughs> hotels and then they all have the same brass fixtures all over the place same uh, artwork hasn't really been updated in a few years like almost all those hotels so my, my wife would walk in there and be like oh please put some polished nickel or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, but no, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Now, what are you up to right now musically in terms of recent projects, something you're working on currently, something you're planning on, and maybe even if you're doing any virtual events during the current unpleasantness? Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been writing some. So I released uh, an album last year, so in late in October last year. And the sad thing is, is that I, this year was going to be my year to kind of, I was going to tour a lot more to kind of promote the album. But I mean, you know, shit happens. So, um, you know, there are a lot worse things than not being able to promote your album. So I'm, I'm blessed that way. But I think uh, I really want to, um, once we get out of all of this, hopefully be able to do something um, from a, a tour wise to really, really promote it. And so I, I, Absent that, I've been doing some stages. I haven't done as many as I probably would before. And quite honestly, I haven't because I want people to kind of go see some of my friends, like like my buddy Paul Carella and, and Jason Manns and, you know, Rob and all, all these people that are doing stages that like, you know, I, I want them, I want people to go support them. And so I, I'll do like a stage it here and a stage it there. And I'm probably going to do one coming up actually in the next uh, few weeks. But um we were supposed to have a show in Charlotte at the Evening Muse, uh, and that was supposed to actually be in two weeks. And obviously, we postponed that. It was originally supposed to be in April, and uh, was it April? Yeah, April twenty-first, I think. Um, and then we postponed it to September, which was tentative. We knew, you know, it probably wasn't going to be uh, a go <laughs> once this, once everything started really unfolding. So we're gonna move, we, we're moving it to next year to be safe, like everybody. Um, but then, yeah, I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing songs and you know, I wasn't writing for the first three months of this, which was kind of weird. And I, I was wondering why, because I would normally write one to two songs a month. That's just kind of my, my thing. And I realized I don't, I'm not driving to work. Mm -hmm. So I've, 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 you know, I, I normally would have 35 to 40 minute drive that I would put in my music and put in all my riffs because uh, I put them on my phone and I would come up with lyrics during that time. So interestingly enough, we've taken some trips recently to go to the mountains and um, that's a few hours away from Charlotte. And I went um, up ahead of the family last time and I had three hours that I just listened to riffs and I popped out two songs like that. And I was like, all right, we're back on. So, um, you know, I, I, think, I think the writing is, uh, I'm hoping there's gonna be a lot that comes out of this <laughs> current environment. Um, you know, I'm hoping to have at, at least an album, if not more worth after coming out of this. So, um, but I gotta promote the one I, you know, just put out and I'm still really excited about all those songs. So, uh, Look for a stage it soon. That's great. Now, where can people find you on social media? Uh, and where are albums. So, social media, it's a very difficult handle. Are you ready? I'm, okay. I've got it. It's at 
Hayden Lee Music on all social media because <laughs> I'm not creative that way. I want it to be streamlined. <laughs> I'm very efficient. Um, and then you can go CD Baby, Apple Music, Spotify, you know, um, iTunes still to, to for any of the albums. All the albums are out there. The only one that I have um, not put out there is my Unplugged album, which is an acoustic album. So I, um, I have those, but, and people can just reach out to me on social media. And, you know, if they, if they don't want to have, you know, if they're still old school like me, I have a record player right next to me. Um, and I realize CDs are becoming record players or records, uh, not eight tracks, but, you know, vinyl. Um, but they, uh, if they want a hard copy or something like that, you know, reach out to me through social media and I'll, I'll sign it, send it to them. So. Awesome. Hayden, thank you so much for being with us today. I uh, really appreciated uh, talking to you and appreciate the time you've taken with us. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. And I hope everybody, uh, you and everybody stay safe um, and just uh, stay tuned, stay positive, all the above and stay awesome. That's fantastic. Well, folks, thank you very much for being with us. Stay tuned for more supernatural fandom fabulousness here on Continual. <laughs>